It is Friday, day three. Uh, we got here on Wednesday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, it's going to be another bright, sunny, shiny day. Looks good. Um, today is uh, moving day. We are moving north um, is where we we're going uh, to uh, another part of the lake. Um, and we're going to hopefully find a campsite there is what we're going to do. So it should be an exciting day. I'm going to get some fishing in. Um, hopefully I'll fish for dinner. That is the, uh, the goal of the day and then to get camp set up. So hopefully this weather continues. It's a beautiful day. It's all my gear. Packed, ready to go. Casey's got his boat all loaded up. Gonna do some trolling today, so see how that works. All right, just out here trolling. Got a nice little pike here. So, yeah, it's a cool thing to do when you're traveling. Just troll with like a, I'm trolling with a bandit. So it makes it, uh, just more enjoyable uh, to pass the time as you're going up um, massive paddle that we have to do today. Got another pike just trolling on the way up. So you can see him. Sorry. Yeah, another decent pike just trolling. Let him go. So we're trying to make it back to uh, Del to the bay we're going to. Um, camp wind kicked up so key thing about wind is you always want to try to go into it and uh, I just have a little bit further to go I'm gonna stay real close to the shore um, and uh, hopefully all goes well here just uh, this is what we were expecting that's why I wanted to leave a little bit earlier but uh, I kind of made a mistake on my GPS I'm the navigator. Um, I took us the wrong direction for a little bit, and that uh, that cost us a little bit of time. But uh, we should get through this. We're just going to hug the shoreline here, and uh, and push on. So uh, had some navigational problems again. Um, there's supposed to be like a little stream that runs through here, but uh, there's not. So we have to do some more backtracking. Um, we were with the wind. Now we're going to go against the wind a little bit. I'm just taking a break. I'm eating a Kate's Real Food uh, Peanut Butter and Dark Chocolate Bar. And it's pretty good. Casey's beginning to hate me. And uh, <laughs> my navigational skills are very weak today. But that's part of Outdoor Adventure Club. Is uh, making mistakes. As long as they're not too severe. Um, we'll persevere. And we'll get through this. We just have to bump around on this little island right here. And we should be. So we made it back to the uh, bay we were gonna stay at uh, tonight. Um, but um, we just decided to keep pushing on a little bit. Um, there's an island out there that has these abandoned cabins on it. We just couldn't make it to them because, uh, uh, because there's so much uh, wind and things. Um, but there's a big island. Uh, maybe we'll check it out on the way back. Um, but we're going to push through and we're going to try to get into another uh, another section of uh, uh, lake here um, is what we're going to do. So um, stay with us. Um, we'll see how this goes. Um, the campsite was nice um, that we were going to stay at, but uh, we just want to get a little further north. And then if the fishing is not that good down up there, then uh, we can start working our way back um, the next couple of days to where we... Uh, to where we originally started because that was really really good fishing so we just did a little portage over the uh, train tracks here um, there is an outpost camp on this lake um, but uh, nobody's there um, that's the boats from that uh, outpost camp um, we came from over there now we're going over here um, hopefully the fishing is really good um, if not uh, we uh, we know we know what's in this lake, so uh, we'll uh, we'll give it a go. If it doesn't work out, then we're gonna head back to where we were. Um, we kind of feel a little bit down because we left uh, really good fishing, um, but we still have an adventurous spirit and uh, always curious what's uh, what's on this side of the track. So so there's some uh, dark clouds coming in. Um, we think this area just has got some hammerhead pike in it, um, but we're not sure, so 
Um, we'll find out more tomorrow. Casey made a phenomenal uh, meal. Uh, you can see it's grilled pike. Um, he's got all his veggies there and everything, but uh, super, super amazing, super awesome. So going to batten down the hatches and uh, probably call it a night tonight. So pretty tired with all the paddling that we did. Good morning. It is day four. It is Saturday. Um, finally made it to Saturday. Um, thought last night that I uh, did my hammock really good. Um, and uh, when I tested it out, like everything was amazing. It was dialed in. And then like as the night went on, like I realized I was on the ground. Um, couldn't figure it out. Got out, you know, readjusted some things, you know, I'll put it up higher. Um, those things really didn't look that well um, at it because it's the middle of the night and mosquitoes were um, raging all over the place. Um, giant swarms of mosquitoes are all around, things like that. And uh, my hammock then went right back on the ground. Um, and I was like, well, I'm doing something massively wrong. Uh, and then uh, this morning, uh, when I took a look at the setup in daylight, um, this is what it looks like. It's this tree right here. Um, so folks at home, um, when you're setting up a hammock, make sure that you do proper tree selection. Um, do not select the tree um, that has a high probability of not being strong enough for your hammock and falling over, um, which is what mine is about to do. Um, and that is why my setup uh, was pretty bad last night. Didn't get a good night's sleep, um, but that's okay. Um, those things happen. Um, hopefully tonight I'll get a good night's sleep. Um, we'll have a proper tree selection for my hammock and, uh, and things will go good. Uh, today we're going to fish this top end um, of this lake, um, see if it's any good. If it's not any good, um, we're going to push on. And what do we mean by not any good? Like, uh, like this lake we think is just loaded with these hammerhead pike, um, which is like a small uh, pike because um, that's all we've caught. We haven't seen any smallmouth. Um, that's kind of what we like to target is the, uh, is the smallmouth, big smallmouth. Um, is kind of what we're after on this trip. So um, big pike would be nice if they're in here as well to get one of those, but uh, pretty sure that there's hammerhead pike um, and that's it in here. Um, but, uh, but we'll see um, what's happening in this, uh, in this little lake that we're in. The story I'm gonna tell you right now is the story of this lake right here. This is a uh, a story not many people know about this lake, but there was a young man by the name of Billy Watkins. Billy Watkins was a true adventurer, a true adventurer in every word, and he was always seeking out the lakes that he thought hadn't been fished before. He decided to come to this lake, this lake that I'm on right now. Came to this lake, and that was the last time we ever heard of from Billy Watkins. Rumor has it, there's a giant pike that roams the waters of this backcountry lake. Billy Watkins was throwing a MEP spinner. He threw that MEP spinner out. When he threw that MEP spinner out, he got snagged on a beaver lodge. When he got snagged on a beaver lodge, he reached his arm out to get that hook off that log. That's when the water began to tremble. Waves began to happen. And Billy was no more. Rumor has it, the shores of this little backcountry lake are haunted by Billy Watkins. And at night, you can hear him echoing the words of, that's the biggest pike I've ever seen. Reason that I'm here on this lake is to try to find that pike that Billy Watkins got eaten by. So this lake is loaded with these guys, um, just little hammerhead pike. Um, haven't moved anything big, but a lot of uh, pike that are like this. So um, this guy I'm probably gonna eat because he's, uh, he's bleeding. I got him in the gill. Um, they all inhale it too, so um, that's why you should fish barbless. Um, Easier to get the hook out and things like that, but this lake is just jam-packed um, with these little pike. Nothing big yet. It's a little smallmouth, so 
This lake's got a lot of little fish. Um, just haven't found any really, uh, uh, really big fish yet. So, switched over to the Ned rig. I'm um, going for a smallmouth now. So we'll see what uh, what happens. All right. So uh, kind of moved away from a bay um, and moved up into more of like a river system. Um, but uh, cool thing about when you do these adventures and things like that, um, it's exploring. I, I know we're not catching giant, huge fish, um, but uh, just the exploration part of it's uh, super, super, super cool. Um, this is a re really beautiful island that's out there, and then it kind of streams up back in there, and that's where uh, I'm going to be heading. I'm going to fish this island here, but this is... Uh, this like at first when I came here I was like ah it's kind of swampy and things like that but now this this system really opened up and now it's gonna taper off into a stream but this is pure beauty so this is why you come to these little magical places that you don't think exist and then they uh, they kind of pop up and they surprise you so hopefully we'll uh, we will get into some uh, some good fish uh, in here. If not, we already have enough fish for lunch. We're gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna do a little fried pike uh, is what I'm going to do uh, for lunch today. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. So this is as uh, far as we're probably gonna make it here on the uh, upper reaches of this, uh, this system, uh, river system. Uh, now it just gets real too shallow back there. Um, so we've made it to the very top and we're going to start working our way uh, back down the next couple of days. So really, 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 really beautiful uh, how this uh, opened up and then it became like a little river system that goes back here. I'm um, supposed to open up again um, back over there. We're going to try to get back there, um, but it is really shallow. Another little pike. Uh, this lake's loaded with... Uh, with small pike so still looking for a big one so we'll keep keep trying so I had to uh, change up my hammock a little bit um, is what I had to do if you remember my hammock uh, it uh, it was not good last night so I made sure I found a stronger place to put my hammock uh, built it up a little bit it's got a cool view now it's got a little front porch out there and everything but uh, when you do these trips and things like that, it's important to stay out of the sun sometimes. And uh, I think this is the ultimate setup that you can have with a hammock and then the tarp over it. I got a good view out there uh, as well. Uh, I did test it, so uh, I'm not low to the ground uh, like I was last night when that tree, uh, when that tree fell. Just finished fishing, got our pike cleaned. I am frying mine. Um, this is the finished result that's right here. I did mine with onions again. It's my favorite meal. So often people talk about, what is your favorite meal to eat? Mine is fried fish with onions. So I could eat that every single day of my life. Yesterday, Casey did an amazing pike um, that is grilled. I'm gonna try that a little bit later on uh, in the week uh, on my own see how that turns out we're also going to smoke pike um, as well smoke pike smoke bass we're going to try that as well um, that's what Casey's doing over there he's got his fire going um, and he is getting his grill on is what he is doing so both techniques are super awesome way to cook fish pike grilled is really 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 good so you should try that one at home as well pretty good day tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to move on we're going to go further back to where we were at um, on that blueberry island. We might stay at a different island, um, but we're gonna go back to the big lake. Uh, this is a little unnamed lake that we're fishing right now, so it's a super cool experience. Uh, we just found here that this is kind of more like a nursery where there's a lot of small fish, um, not too many uh, really large fish, um, and we wanna try to get into some of those really, really big fish that we were catching uh, on that big lake. It's Casey here with Outdoor Adventure Club, with Nick, of course. Um, so tonight we want to talk about, with our little fireside chat, the gear, maybe the one or two things that we are glad we brought, like our, our favorite things, and the thing that we wish we would have brought. Um, so the, the things, I got a brand new summer sleeping bag. Normally I have a, a cold weather sleeping bag. 
and I got this summer one. It's really lightweight and I love it. So I have my hammock and I have my under quilt and then a really light sleeping bag um, that I can use like a blanket. I really haven't gotten into it. It's been warm enough to just the under quilt itself has been fine, but I like having that. It's just like a little extra warmth when I need it. And I know we're due for a cold night. Um, we looked at the weather beforehand and we're going to have a cold night. The other thing is I got this new solar charger, which is uh, it's behind me charging things. It's basically here. I'll get it real quick. So it looks like a wallet kind of, except it's heavy. It's a 40,000 milliamp battery. So you charge it up ahead of time, like so it stores like a battery. And then when I'm out on the boat, I can just unfold it and has these solar panels. So when I'm on the canoe all day, I just kind of carabine her into my rope and just let it basically trickle charge. Um, it doesn't charge super fast. Like it's not, it's not like if you leave it out all day, it'll fully recharge its battery. Um, but it's enough that I've got five GoPro batteries and I'm charging at least two every night that it's enough that it's, it's keeping those full. This sucker's still pretty full. Um, I think it's like 80%, which is good. That'll definitely, even if I don't solar charge anymore, like it'll get me through the rest of the week. So I'm glad I brought that. The one thing I wish I would have brought was uh, crankbaits. I didn't bring any crankbaits. And some of the spoons I brought were too small. Um, I should have brought bigger spoons like I would use for walleye. I guess I, did, I wasn't prepared for the pike. Um, and I should have brought some lipped crankbaits. That's, I kind of pooped the bed on that one. All right, some of the gear that uh, that I have that I'm like most thankful for this year that I think are really cool. I think having a rod holder, um, that's one thing that I brought uh, this year uh, is super, super awesome to have. Um, just when you're going through those long stretches of uh, paddling and things like that, um, you wanna have something to keep your uh, keep you kind of going. Um, keep you motivated and uh, and I find that just having being able to troll um, with that rod holder I used to just have it like my my rod sitting out uh, on the boat and I kind of had it like in between um, different things to kind of keep it steady and things like that but this rod holder keeps it up high I don't hit it with my paddle or anything like that um, another thing that's critical to have I think everyone needs to have it when you're doing these types of trips um, this is a spot and uh, what this allows us to do uh, especially if you're doing solo um, this allows you to contact um, individuals in a time of crisis, okay, uh, is what allows you to do. Um, you can say everything's okay. You can say, hey, I need a hand, or if it's like severely severe, um, that's when you hit that SOS button. Um, they'll fly in, they'll come, they'll get you, because um, you never know what's going to happen out here uh, as well. Um, so it's kind of vitally important that, uh, that you have some type of communication. There's no cell phone service out here or anything like that, so having this spot um, is kind of a, a lifesaver uh, to have. Uh, and like the guy said, you don't you hit the SOS button if like somebody loses an arm. Right. Like it has to because they're gonna fly in a helicopter. Like it's gonna be Coast Guard or some type of life flight. It's pretty serious stuff. So it's not like I'm really sad today or I'm just cold. Like you hit that if it's a severe emergency. Yeah. Um, gear that I wish I did not bring. I brought a sponge, uh, which is really dumb of me to bring. Um, that moss that you have. Um, it's on every island. You can grab it. It does better than an SOS pad. It does better than a sponge that you can use. Um, gear that I wish that I would have brought. Um, the one major thing uh, that I wish that I would have brought is, is something better to read. Um, <laughs> I, I brought a horrible book um, and it's, it's a tough read. Um, I think Kindles are cool, things like that, that you can get like 300 um, books in, in a Kindle more than that. And just having that ability to, to read because there's going to be a down day um, where nothing's going on and having that reading capability uh, would be super cool. I just got a dud of a book uh, this time. so Yeah, I brought my Kindle. Um, it's like from 2007. It's super old, but I just finished a book this afternoon and I'll probably, I read a little bit every night before I go to bed. So I'll probably start a new book tonight, which is, and in terms of weight, it's huge. It's really big because it's super lightweight. That's it.